Hello, writers. Welcome back to another creative writing webinar. It's good to see everybody here. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about genre. Genre is a, another interesting part of creative writing. It's something good for us writers to know about. Uh, so we're going to start talking about it a little bit. Let's see who we have here today. I see that AG is here. Anya, Amber, Angelica, Aubrey, Austin. Uh, looks like we have more than one Austin here. Hi, guys. Brando, Evelyn, Fallon, Haley, Gianna, Katja, Lorna, Mackenzie, Olivia, Sophia. Uh, we have more than one Sophia here today. And Stephanie. And more people are coming in. New people are arriving. Hi, new arrivals. Don't worry, we haven't talked about anything yet. <laughs> That's usually everybody's first question. What did I miss? You haven't missed anything yet. We haven't talked about anything yet. Um, hi to everyone that's saying hi in the Q&A box. Good to see you guys again. Uh, good. All right, so um, creative writing genre. Let's start talking about it. So genre, in creative writing, genre means a category or type of story. In each genre of story, your reader will probably expect some things to happen based on all the other stories they have read in that genre. Uh, this word applies to other forms of art too besides writing. Uh, there are genres of movie, there are genres of plays, and genres of music. And whenever you're talking about genre, you're basically just saying it's one kind of category or type of that art form. You'll hear uh, genre used in lots of different types of art and forms of communication because we as humans, we like to put things in categories. We like to be able to describe things and say, all the things of this type are kind of similar. All the things of this type are kind of similar. So then we can have kind of productive, useful conversations about all the things in that category. And if I talk about one genre, you'll usually know kind of what I'm talking about because you're used to knowing what kind of things are in that category. So here are a few genres you may have heard of in writing. Fantasy, science fiction, horror, Western, romance, thriller, mystery, adventure. And you've probably heard of a lot of other genres too. If you want, you guys can go ahead and write some of those in the Q&A box down at the bottom of your screen. Um, yeah, somebody's already, uh, Lorna already wrote historical fiction, history. Yeah, those are two more genres. If you guys think of any more, go ahead and put those in there. Ooh, AG says dystopia. That usually means a story that takes place in the future and everything is bad. <laughs> There's a lot of dystopia fiction out there. Um, just some uh, genres of music off the top of my head. We're used to talking about there's uh, classic rock, there's classical, there is country music, there is hip hop, there is electronic music. And the interesting thing about genre, when we're talking about genre, is that there can actually be a lot of difference, uh, different things within a genre. There can be what are called sub-genres. Sub means below. So in a bigger genre like uh, science fiction, there will often be a lot of smaller genres of science fiction below it. There's military science fiction, which has to do with like usually uh, futuristic battles and soldiers and it has lots of weapons and things. There is, um, there's like science fiction that has mostly to do with like exploring space. There's science fiction that takes place right here on earth and never goes to space. So within a broader category, there's usually uh, flavors of that category. You know, you've got chocolate, but then you've got dark chocolate, milk chocolate, white chocolate. So in the same way, you can have an overall genre of writing, and then there can be more specific types of that genre. Brando says, action is a genre. Yes, it is. Um, AG says, utopia. That's usually where something's really perfect in the future, as opposed to dystopia, which is things are bad in the future. Um, 
Uh, Katja says that a musical is a type of genre. Yeah. In, if we're talking about like theater, for example, the two probably biggest genres of stage performance, if you're going to see like a play, is you have like, uh, well, plays and musicals. A play, you would just have people talking and acting on stage and telling a story. In the musical, they're singing and they're dancing too. And underneath a play, you know, you'd have like, there are tragedies, there's comedies, etc. Under a musical, you'd have different subgenres also. So Evelyn points out that two of the biggest genres are fiction and nonfiction. Thing, stories that we make up and writing about things that are real. Yeah, those are pretty much the two biggest genres of writing that we could think of. Um, <laughs> April says, sorry I'm late, what are we talking about? <laughs> um, we're talking about genre, which is the kind of the big different categories of writing. We're specifically talking, well, the different categories of, of an art form, specifically since this is creative writing, we're talking about the big different categories of writing and why we study those and what we can learn from studying about those. Uh, Lorna says some other genres could be uh, historical fiction, animals. Yeah, you could have fiction that's mostly about animals. Um, autobiography. Well, yeah, autobiography would be a genre of writing, but under like creative writing or fiction, uh, it wouldn't be. Uh, autobiography, which is where you write the story of your own life, you write about yourself, that would go under nonfiction. All right. So you guys wrote lots of great categories here, lots of great genres. So good job. <laughs> and there's been a few that um, I don't know that I've heard of as a genre before. One person said fruit. Um, I don't know that I would call that an overall genre, but you could definitely write about fruit. Maybe if a lot of people all started writing stories about fruit, maybe that could develop into a genre. <laughs> we'll come back to that idea a little bit later. All right, so here we go. So here's a, yeah, so this was a few genres you may have heard of. You guys just wrote some more. Anyone who reads a story or book from one of these genres will probably expect it to have a certain type of story with certain types of characters. Let's look at the genre of fantasy. What do we expect to read about in a fantasy story? Well, here's a few things. We usually ex expect that a fantasy story would have some or all of the following things like magic, dragons, sword fights, elves, wizards, quests, a dark lord, you know, the big evil uh, guy that, you know, or girl that you have to like fight at the end of the story, orcs, which is a type of monster. These are all things that appear over and over and over again in fantasy stories. Some of the first most famous fantasy stories had all of these things in the story. And people loved those first stories so much that all the writers that came after them wanted to include these things too. So you see uh, some of the same, the same things popping up over and over again. Now, a fantasy story doesn't have to have all of those things, or even most of them, to be a fantasy story. But if it doesn't have any of them, it might not feel like a fantasy story to your readers. So that's the, that's the thing about genre. Um, there's no rule that says that the fantasy genre has to have this whole exact list of things. Uh, there's not even a definition that says if, uh, if the story doesn't contain this thing, then it's not a fantasy story. A genre is really created by all of us writers and readers kind of coming to an agreement over what kind of story we're talking about. Um, if, for example, uh, most fantasy stories early on when the first writers were creating them Let's say they always included, um, I'm going to think of something really silly here. Let's say every fantasy story always included ice cream. Uh, no matter what else was happening in the book, no matter what else was happening in the story, there was almost always somebody eating ice cream in a fantasy story. Well, down the line here, decades later, we would probably just think of ice cream as a fantasy story 
thing in, in that genre. And if you didn't read uh, a story that had ice cream in it, when it did have dragons and magic and everything else, but didn't have ice cream, you might be saying to your friend like, yeah, that was a pretty good book, but it didn't have much ice cream in it, did it? <laughs> and it just would be that we expect that at that point. So it's the thing that as writers, because this is a creative writing webinar, that's the, that's the cool thing about genre is that you are helping create the idea of what the genre is every time you write a story. And if you decide to start kind of mixing in other elements, you actually start helping change the idea of what that genre is too. Because genres have changed over time. Uh, what we now consider the fantasy genre very early on was called fairy stories because the first stories that you could kind of consider to be fantasy usually had, you know, little fairy creatures and they had some magic, but they didn't include a lot of the things that we now think of as fantasy uh, story elements. So uh, genres change over time. And also some of the genres that are very popular in one time period can kind of die out and people aren't really writing in that genre anymore. And new genres pop up when people start all writing in one kind of story and kind of adding to those stories and you read a story and you really like it so you write one of your own that's similar to it a new genre can just kind of pop up and appear and now people love it and people want to read more stories like that all right so here is going to be our first activity for the day activity one write a list of characters things events etc you would expect to read about in a science fiction story. So we're gonna take that genre of science fiction and I want you to think about the stories you've read uh, in books or in you know, short stories, uh, anything that you've read in a science fiction book. And I want you to just list out what things you expect or think of as science fiction things based on what you've read. Put that in the Q&A box. We're really just looking for a list here like just like we talked about in fantasy, we said magic, wizards, dragons, elves, orcs, a dark lord. Those were the first things I thought of when I thought of fantasy. Well, what do you think of when you think of science fiction? Go ahead and put that in the Q&A box. I'm just reading down here what else you guys uh, wrote. <laughs> One person asks, did you really see fruit? Yes, one person wrote fruit. Uh, I don't know if it was a typo or not, but they listed that as one genre of story. And I actually think that's pretty cool. <laughs> it makes me think of what the genre of fruit would be. And whenever I read something like that, my imagination just starts spiraling. You know, I just start thinking of like, what would the genre of fruit be? Whole stories, whole books written about fruit. I mean, I love fruit, so I'd read a book about that. Um, okay, so Aubrey wrote unicorns as something that they think of for uh, fantasy. Yeah, definitely. Um, Isis asks, where did the word fantasy come from? That's a good question. I've never looked up uh, what the, where that word comes from. Isis, if you'd like to look that word up for us and find out what the, it's called the derivation. That means where the word comes from. If you wanna look that up and write that in the Q&A box, I'll share that with the rest of the group. So go ahead and find, you can find out for us where fantasy came from. All right, so Austin, that's the first answer I see here. Austin says, the list of things that he expects in science fiction includes aliens, spaceships, scientists, and planets. That's awesome. Oh, and he also adds space blasters. <laughs> uh, very cool. Um, one person's asking, what is science fiction? So science fiction is a genre where you, science fiction doesn't always include things like magic, but it usually includes, well, I'm going to give you guys a list right here. <laughs> you guys can keep on making your own lists, but it usually takes things that you can find in science and tells made up imaginative stories about them. So for example, one piece of science or technology is spaceships, rockets, spacecraft. Um, 
very early on when the idea of a rocket was first being created, the first scientists that invented this, uh, you know, a rocket that could shoot up into the sky and up into space, um, writers started writing stories about that idea. Actually, way back before the rocket was ever invented, uh, there was one writer wrote a story about basically a giant cannon and it kind of had a big um, shell, like a big kind of bullet inside of it and people get inside it and they fire it off and it sh th this cannon shoots this thing all the way up and it lands on the moon. And this story was written before we ever had any rockets, but they were basically kind of creating or coming up with the idea of a vehicle that could go all the way to the moon and explore the moon. So science fiction is the genre or the type of writing where people sort of think about uh, things related to science and technology but they create made up fictional stories about them. So uh, classic science fiction could be anything from, you know, uh, well, really old stories, like there's uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is a very old famous book about submarine voyages underneath the ocean, but it, uh, encountering giant monsters and creatures under the water. Um, there's another very old book uh, called The Time Traveler, and it's about just that, time travel. It was written a long time ago, um, or no, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, The Time Machine. I think that's H.G. Wells. Anyway, it's about a person creating a time machine and going back in time and exploring different time periods and meeting weird people. Um, but it was taking an idea that was kind of like a science idea and writing a fictional story about it. So science fiction, there you go. I'll read some more of your guys' lists about what we expect in science fiction. Madeline says, robots, flying cars, aliens. <laughs> yeah, me too, I think of those things also. AG says, time machine, spaceships, lasers, evil scientists. Very nice. Uh, Lorna says, exoplanets. Awesome, that's a, that's a, yeah, that's a really cool concept there. Exoplanets are planets that orbit around other stars in other solar systems, not our star. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm 90% sure that's the definition of exoplanet. Uh, Evelyn says space travel and advanced technology. Um, <laughs> um, my, my certainty just went up to 100%. That's the definition of exoplanet. <laughs> um, I got a thumbs up from James, our, spy, our uh, space uh, teacher. <laughs> All right, so... Oh, we still have a few more people that came in late. Um, sorry, guys. A brief recap. We're talking about genre, which is like the categories of stories that we can write about. So right now we are talking about the genre of science fiction. What do we expect when we read science fiction or write science fiction? We're writing lists of, you know, what would you expect to see in a science fiction story? So Giannis says, a mad scientist. Isis says, time travel and superpowers. <laughs> uh, yeah, good answers, guys. Um, yeah, that's actually, I like that Isis brought that up. So in the genre of science fiction, a long time ago, you know, decades ago, people started writing stories about, uh, you know, people that usually through space travel or science experiments gone wrong, they got superpowers. And then they like would, you know, fight crime or do, you know, uh, uh, you know, save the day in one way or another. And at first, these stories were just kind of considered fantasy or science fiction. You know, I think people weren't really sure what category it was. But eventually, enough stories were written about people with superpowers that stories in that area kind of broke off and became its own genre. So instead of just being a story about someone with superpowers who fights crime, instead of just being a science fiction story or kind of being a fantasy story, people basically eventually decided that was its own thing called a superhero story. And all of the Marvel and DC stories like Batman, Spider-Man, now there's a whole category of story where when somebody says, I'm writing a superhero story, we kind of are like, okay, we have an expectation of what that story is gonna be about or what kind of things will be in a superhero story. And since that whole genre was invented, people have continued inventing new things that uh, the superhero genre 
now has a bunch of sub genres too. You can write, you can read uh, superhero stories uh, that get very focused in certain areas. And those ones do not include all the stuff that you would expect from a superhero story. So again, I'm glad Isis brought up superpowers because that's a genre that right now is very popular and is continuing to evolve and change as we speak. All right, I'm gonna read a few more of these examples and then we'll move on. Uh, Mackenzie says, sea monsters, spaceships, and Jabba the Hutt. Jabba the Hutt are things that she expects in science fiction. <laughs> Uh, that's an alien from a Star Wars movie. So I'll read just, let's see. Um, Katja says, I think of math and space and mixing elements as something in science fiction. Yeah, totally. Lorna says, lasers. Yep, that's another, that's another good thing in science fiction. Um, Ethan includes several different things from Star Wars, but also spaceships, laser guns, swords, aliens, robots, evil men in masks. Uh, Fallon says lasers, guns, teleportation, mechanized things like robots, exploration, the future, maybe a mystery, hidden passages, <laughs> and lots of other stuff. So good job. You guys are doing great. There's actually a ton more answers here, and I'm going to read all these later, but I don't have time to read all of them on screen right now. But you guys are doing a great job. Okay, so moving on to the next part here. One way you can surprise your readers is to mix up two genres, kind of add them together. As a writer, you could take things a reader would expect to find in one genre and put them into another. It might be a fun surprise for the reader. So one of the reasons that we study about stuff like this, why we learn about things like genre is that when you know what the genres are and what people expect from them, uh, the more you know the rules, the more you can break them in the right way. And what I mean by that is if you tell, you know, if you tell people that you're writing a science fiction story and you accidentally leave out almost all the things that people expect from a science fiction story, uh, they're probably going to be confused. They might still like your story, but if it says like on the cover or on the back of the book, it says, you know, science fiction or this is a science fiction story. And then there's no robots, there's no space, there's no lasers, there's no anything. Uh, they might go like, wait, what? I, I, I bought this because I thought it was science fiction. Um, are you sure? The, there was dinosaurs and there was a love story. I'm not really sure why this was a science fiction book. <laughs> but when you really understand genre, you can include enough to let people know what kind of story you're trying to tell, but you can start having fun with it and mixing things up. You could maybe mash two different genres together into one new type of story. So a few that I just looked up really quickly. Um, I have not read this book, but I found this book while doing a Google search. It's called Unicorn Western. Uh, so again, I, I, I cannot recommend this book. I don't know if it's any good or not. But apparently it's about a cowboy and he rides a unicorn. And <laughs> just from what I briefly read about this book, it combines the Western genre with the fantasy genre. So there's things that we would expect from a Western book like gunfights and outlaws and a sheriff or a, a lawman trying to you know, clean up the town or something like that. But there's also magical spells uh, there's unicorns. There is a lot of things from the fantasy genre. So again, I haven't read this book, but the fact that it's a Western and it's fantasy, and I mean, look at that cover. I definitely want to read this book. I am intrigued. <laughs> uh, the idea of these two things being smushed together into one book, um, it, it, it immediately went on to my must-read list. Um, another combination of two different genres you may have actually heard of this one before, this has been out for a number of years, is Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. So Pride and Prejudice is a classic book written a long time ago by a writer named Jane Austen. I've read it, it's an excellent book. Um, it's a very famous book, a bunch of movies have been made out of it and TV shows and whatnot. Um, but it's about, it's a drama, it's about romance, it's about uh, people falling in and out of love and worrying about, um, 
you know, if they're going to have enough money to keep their, their home or not. You know, it's got lots of very dramatic things. But this writer, he took that old story and he combined it with a zombie story. So there's all of these, you know, historical, uh, romantic drama things in the book that you'd expect from that genre and smushed together with a zombie story. So zombies attack, they have to fight zombies and do all that sort of stuff. I think they made, they made a movie out of this. So I haven't read this. I haven't, re I haven't seen the movie either. I've heard they're a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, this writer is taking two different genres and he is smushing them together to make something new and fun, hopefully. So here's your second activity, activity number two. I want you to think of two different genres. And right now in just a couple sentences or paragraph, I want you to describe a story you could write that could mix these two genres together. So you can think of any of those genres that we talked about earlier, science fiction, fantasy, horror, uh, romance, adventure, uh, maybe dinosaur stories as a genre, uh, you know, historical fiction, um, mystery, uh, detective novel, crime novel, uh, whatever two genres you'd like, really quickly, try to smush two of them together and tell us real quickly in a few sentences, what could a story be about that smushed two of those genres together? And while you guys start doing that, I'm gonna see what else we have here in the Q&A box. Uh, Fallon asks, weren't there TV shows and art done made in the science fiction genre at that time too? Uh, yeah, there's been science fiction and science fiction shows and art and everything done for a long time. Um, the Twilight Zone was an old black and white TV show that had a lot of science fiction in it. That was around a long time ago, decades ago, that they've updated that show uh, a few times. I think a new version of The Twilight Zone just came out like last year. Um, so yeah, science fiction, they've been making new stuff in that genre for a long time. Um, there's several more really great uh, examples in here. You guys are making good lists. Oh, Isis came back with, a, with some information for us. Uh, Isis says that a lot of science fiction writers had a science background. Yeah, that's true. A lot of the classic uh, science fiction was written by scientists or people that at least knew a lot about science. That's a really good point. Um, Isis also says the word fantasy comes from the Greek word fantasia, meaning appearance. Oh, that's really interesting. So I bet if we looked into that a little bit more, my guess is that fantasy with fantasia has to do something with, you know, the appearances, how things look, how they actually are. That makes me think of a lot of stuff that happens in fantasy with magic and whatnot. Things are not always how they appear. That's really cool. Thank you for doing that, Isis. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. Um, April, I'll read one more from uh, the lists earlier. April said, uh, science fiction includes bad people, witches and wizards, guns, swords, aliens, dragons, mysterious things, big monsters, and wands. Yeah, that sounds like that sounds like a combination of science fiction and fantasy. That's a that's a good list, and it makes an uh, it's another point that I want to make too. You know, sometimes these genres do cross over. Um, you know, this activity that we're starting to do is when you can on purpose try to smush two genres together, but at the same time, it's not always easy to tell what genre a story is actually in. Uh, if your story takes place in space and there's space battles and lasers and whatnot, uh, like Star Wars, but there's also the force and there's what looks a lot like magic. How do you say if, if is Star Wars science fiction? Is it fantasy? Is it kind of a combination of the two? There's a lot of opinions on that. Some people feel that, oh, no, 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 Star Wars is science fiction. But I've also heard it said, and I've, heard, I've, I've read on the internet before, some people argue no. Star Wars is a fantasy. <laughs> uh, it's more of a fantasy than a science fiction story. So you can definitely, you know, have a story that kind of has elements of two different genres. And you're not really trying to do a mashup as much as just the story you want to tell 
kind of borrows a little bit from both of those areas. All right, let's see what else we have here. So for, okay, so for smushing two genres together. All right, the first one I see here, Evelyn says, science fiction and fantasy, wizards on the moon. <laughs> Evelyn, I would read that story right away. That, that sounds awesome. Uh, it makes me think of, there, you know, there's magic and fantasy that we want to colonize the moon, but we're having wizards do it. That sounds like a great idea to me. <laughs> uh, Aubrey says, a zombie riding a unicorn. Okay, that's a good mashup. Um, April says, you can mash up romance and fantasy. Uh, yeah, definitely. In fact, um, before, you know, we had to stay home and all the libraries were, you know, closed down temporarily. I checked out a book from the library that I thought was just a fantasy novel, you know, like magic and sword fights and stuff. And as I started reading it, I found out, oh, this is also a romance novel. That's okay. <laughs> it's been interesting so far. So, like, I don't read a lot of romance, but, you know, if it's a good book, it's a good book. So, romance and fantasy, definitely. All right. Uh, Angelica says, a mystery story about dinosaurs. Wow, oh, that's a good idea. Uh, Jurassic Park is kind of a science fiction plus a mystery plus a dinosaur book. And it's one of my favorite books of all time. So, definitely. Um, Isis says you could combine a superhero story and a horror story. Definitely. Um, I think a movie came out earlier this year or last year that's kind of a superhero story, but it's also like a scary movie. Um, I didn't see it, but that's, those two things were smushed together for that movie. Um, Gianna says, you could combine a love story and a horror story. Yeah, for sure. Lorna says, danger and mystery. The story would include sword fights, masks, black horses, cloaks, fancy houses, and plums. <laughs> so in addition to danger and mystery, we also have the fruit genre there. <laughs> uh, I love it. Uh, we, we, you guys, feel free to include more fruit genre in your guys' stories here. All right, Milo says, a story where there's a boy who goes because of a dare to a haunted house. And when he opens the door, it's all bright and full of cotton candy and different types of candy and unicorns and zombies everywhere. So <laughs> I like Milo's mashup. Milo has already been mashing up his examples in a lot of webinars. But it looks like we have fantasy and horror story and there's the candy and the haunted house from from a few webinars ago. So very cool. <laughs> um, yeah, Brando says you can mix fantasy and nonfiction. Um, yeah, well, with nonfiction, that would be interesting because nonfiction, of course, we're trying to tell a story that is all true, that's all real, that doesn't have any fiction stuff in it. So I'm trying to think what a fantasy and nonfiction would be. Maybe it would be a book that pretends to be uh, a nonfiction, like it's like a textbook, but it's about how magic exists in the real world or something. That could be interesting. I know that there, I've seen books before, like there's a book called Dragonology, and it's kind of like a textbook about dragons. It kind of tells you lots of facts and science, and it pretends like it's like a science book, but it's all about dragons, which don't really exist. So there you go. That is kind of like nonfiction and fantasy being mashed up. Um, let's see. Fallon says, historical fiction mixed with fiction. In a native tribe that was civilized, but they let them keep their beliefs, there is magic. The tribe's people believe in spirits and ceremonies, and whenever a new child that has a affinity for water gets born, the village chief appoints them as the village rain dancer, someone who is supposed to be able to bring rain. This is in colonial times where there isn't much or hardly any electronic stuff, at least in this area, there isn't. And she goes on to talk about the magic and how it works with farming. That sounds really good. I would, I would definitely read that story found. So thank you for that. Um, all right, last example we're going to read before we go on. Um, or maybe one or two more here. Ethan talks about manga. That's a genre of Japanese uh, uh, story where it's like a type of comic book. Like they draw pictures and they have a story. 
So Ethan says, it's a manga about a man who kills a vampire and wears its cloak, knowing that it will make him partially a vampire himself. He terrorizes villages and attacks humans trying to find um, the Tristone Octator, a medallion whose power can put out the sun, making him the most powerful being on the planet. And he goes on to say more about that. It sounds like you're mixing up manga and a horror story, like a vampire story. That sounds awesome, dude. Okay, last one. Um, superheroes and horror, Isa says, a terrorist with creepy superpowers. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. That, uh, those are two genres that are very popular, so I could definitely see those being combined. Okay, um, next up. All right, so many writers who uh, get paid to write their stories and books. If you are interested in being a professional writer, it is important to understand what readers want to read. Part of this is knowing when to follow the rules about a genre, but it is also important to know when to break them. Some writers, by breaking the rules and writing what they wanted, actually created new genres. So we, we touched on this briefly before, but again, it's, it's really important. The more you can study about how writing works and how the, what the, you know, the rules are, what the strong suggestions are, you can write uh, stories and books that people kind of, uh, you can kind of give them what they want, but also you can give them something new too. Um, I read a book once that was kind of about writing in general. And there was a quote from a head of a movie studio. One of the people that, you know, they, they, you know, they make movies, they pay to have movies made. And the head of this studio told the person who wrote the book that, you know, what they really wanted to make a movie about was they wanted the same thing, but different. <laughs> and what they meant by that was, is this, this studio head, he wanted, you know, basically the same kind of movie that they'd already been making a lot of, mo uh, of money off of, but make it different too. <laughs> That's kind of a contradiction. I think really the heart of what that guy was saying was to write stories that people really enjoy and that they're really going to like. And if you want to write uh, professionally and make money off of it, you have to find that balance between you have to kind of give people what they want but you also have to balance that with your own creativity and what you want. Uh, there have been writers throughout history that they write something so unique and so different and it's so what they want that it can kind of be almost bizarre or really strange. And people are kind of like, uh, I don't really know about this. And that writer never really finds success. Sometimes after like years and years later, like the person died a long time ago, they kind of become successful because enough people read it and they get it and they like it, but the writer never really had any success in their lifetime. Um, so, you know, you have to kind of find that balance between like your creative art and like whatever you want to do. But if you want to find sort of professional success as a writer, you do also have to balance that with, well, what are all these people out here, all these readers, what are they interested in? What are they buying? What do they want more of? So, you can do sort of your own research on this. You can go on Amazon, the biggest uh, bookseller in the world right now, and you can find their top 100 books list. You can look at the New York Times bestseller list online. You can find out what are people buying? What are people reading? You can find out, you know, if, if lots of readers are really interested in this area, that can sort of inform you that that genre is very popular maybe that might be something that you would want to write about. But you probably also won't find success if you just try to copy those things exactly. So you can kind of study and learn about what genres are really popular. And then you have to kind of decide still, what do you want to write about? So you might see that, you know, for a while, not as much anymore, but there was a whole time period where vampire stories was really, really popular. There was Twilight, uh, there were a lot of other books that were about vampires and all the bestsellers for a while seemed to be about vampires. So a lot of writers, they decided, okay, I'll write a vampire story too, but I'm going to tell it my way. 
And a lot of writers found success and they really enjoyed what they were writing about by finding that sort of balance. So for our last activity today, um, let's just pick any genre that you would like and write a fun paragraph that really shows that genre. And I'll try to guess what genre you're writing about. So I think this will be fun. Uh, don't tell me what genre you're writing about, but write a few sentences or write a paragraph. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna find that balance. You're gonna try to pick a genre like Western or uh, science fiction or fantasy, and you're gonna try to write it really well using some of the stuff from that genre so that I can tell, oh, this is a Western. Oh, this is a fantasy. But at the same time, really make it you. Make it uh, the story, make those three sentences or that paragraph, uh, make them what you wanna write about and have fun with it. But at the same time, make it enough of that genre that I can tell. Because <laughs> if it's so far out there, then I'm not even sure what we're, what we're talking about. Well, it'll probably still be fun. It'll probably still be a good exercise in writing but we may need to work a little bit harder to find that balance between what does writing in that genre usually look like and what did you want to write about? Try to include both. Try to find that balance. And I will read some of the examples as they pop up here. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, there's one question here. Um, some people ask us sometimes, can I see you? No, uh, when we're doing these webinars, it's just one way. Uh, you guys can see me. I cannot see you or hear you unless you type something in the Q&A box. I can read your guys' uh, writing there, but no, I can't see you. So there you go. All right. Um... <laughs> uh, Ethan says, I cannot write my manga here, sadly. Yeah. Um, yeah, it would be a bit tough. There's, we don't really have a way for you to share any pictures or drawings. <laughs> Milo asks, can we do a mashup? Yeah, for sure. We only have a few minutes, but yeah, write a few sentences, write a paragraph, put it there in the Q&A box, for sure. Try to mash up two genres if you want to. <clears throat> All right, Austin says, Bam, bam, there's only enough room for one of us in this here town, Rusty Rick said, as he holstered his blunt weapon next to his unicorn. <laughs> so yeah, like that example uh, uh, novel cover I showed there. Austin, I'm guessing that this is uh, a Western mixed up with fantasy. I think you did a great job there. All right, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, Haley says, a mad scientist is on a mission to find a magic ball to save his town from evil unicorns. <laughs> so that sounds like science fiction mixed up with fantasy. Great job, Haley. Uh, Lorna says, up, down, up, down, up, down. The cycle never stopped. Riding horses was supposed to be fun, right? Well, based on horses, the one, you know, the, the main, uh, you know, thing or animal in that sentence, I'm going to guess right off the bat, this is probably a Western story or a country story. Um, it could basically be set back in the day and maybe someone's trying to, uh, you know, they're trying to take a wild horse and tame them. Or maybe the story takes place in modern day where somebody's learning to ride horses too, but somewhere in that genre. All right. Mackenzie, oh, Austin says, I, I got it, I figured it out. Thank you, Austin. Mackenzie <laughs> um, says, all of the monsters were escaping. There were uh, dragons, flamingo raptors, <laughs> and blahs. I don't know what a blah is, but let's see, Mackenzie. Uh, this sounds like there's monsters, there's dragons, they're escaping. It sounds like maybe a monster or a scary story mixed up with uh, a fantasy because you've got dragons there too. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, let's see. Uh, Katja says, roses are red, violets are blue. I love them and I love others too. Well, you're putting flowers and love right there in your sentence. I'm guessing 
you're gonna write in the romance genre there. Very nice. Um, AG says, we, I screamed as me and dad zoomed past Venus. Look out, we ducked as the roller coaster flew through a field of asteroids. We turned in a wide circle and flew back to the tiny blue pinprick in the distance. Really nice, AG. I think that's the science fiction story because we're zooming around space. Very cool. All right, I think we're about out of time. So I'm gonna just read a, a couple more here. Evelyn writes, when I woke up, my alarm clock was on my bed and it was telling me, time for school, you slept late. Get off, Peter, I say. Your face shows the time. The clock disappeared and suddenly I had a 45 pound boy sitting on my stomach. <laughs> So this sounds like this person it, uh, can shape shift and turn from a clock into a person and back. So I'm guessing this is probably a fantasy novel, but since there's a, you know, an alarm clock and they're talking about school, I'm guessing it takes place in modern day. So it's probably like a modern day school story mixed with fantasy. Very cool. All right, you guys are putting a lot of awesome answers in here. Um, I'm gonna read just, I think I have time for two more. Fallon says, as he woke up in an unfamiliar room, he sat up in his bed. Beside him was a two-tailed cat. How peculiar. In the background, he heard birds chirping and what sounded like cows bellowing. The door beside him was open, the breeze from outside blowing inside. He smelled apple blossoms and freshly cut grass. He also smelled fresh meat being cooked as well. Enticed by the smell, he stood up and wandered outside towards a delicious smell. He was not ready for what awaited him. He had walked into an entire new world, one that was very unlike his own. What exactly had happened to him? So this sounds like, I'm guessing, it's either a fantasy or a science fiction or a combination of the two because we have animals that are different than normal animals. Uh, there's some sort of teleportation or portal to another world. Very cool. Thank you, Fallon. That's an awesome example. All right. <laughs> Milo says, one day I, like normal, ate my purple pizza on the planet, Aga Jivent, while a mad scientist was trying to make, instead of a purple grape pizza, a monstrosity tomato sauce pizza. So this sounds like science fiction. Great job, Milo. I can't even imagine what a purple grape pizza would taste like, like maybe jam on a pizza. Anyway, very good job, everybody. Thank you for writing about genre today with me. Um, this is my last uh, seminar for this week. I will see you guys all back next week. We're going to be doing three more creative writing classes next week on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday again. We have some more exciting stuff planned. So I hope to see you all back then. Uh, as always, keep on writing, keep on practicing, and I'll see you guys next time. Adios.